Hello, you multi, um, modest misorgy, melody maestros, and thank you to Tunnel Alendi for providing the malt mention for Ralphie Review 984. <sighs> extras, extras, that's what it is, X you see, because I'm giving you an extra video above and beyond a specific single malt whiskey review. And the idea is that I share my experience, which exceeds 30 years. You know, it's quite a stretch, quite a stretch. I have to add, by the way, that over that 30 years, I have regularly taken safety breaks away from spirits and had a whole week off. On, and it's a fairly regular basis that I don't drink any alcohol at all because the long-term constant consumption of alcohol, even when you're not binging and even when you're not an alcoholic, it will build up over time and have an effect on your health. We have to look after our livers, our kidneys, our general homeostatic balance of the body. We must help the body look after itself because if we don't, we then have to go to the doctors and the doctors will want to sell us something from the pharmaceutical industry. And it might not be something to cure us, but something to alleviate the symptoms. This is one reason why I drink alcohol, is to alleviate the symptoms of banal interaction. <laughs> it's why I don't watch television. And I find that returning to not just whiskey, but other quality spirits, time after time, is just, it's fascinating. It's so engaging. It's so life enriching because of the sheer variety of smells and tastes. Quite literally, malt mates, quite literally, it is the smell and taste equivalent of listening to a concert or walking around looking at masterworks hanging in a gallery in a museum somewhere. Or it's the equivalent of, of reading a good book. The, the delivery of the message is in complexity of smell and complexity of taste which you simply won't get to the same degree from foodstuffs. You need ethanol, drinking alcohol, to carry that that experience to you. As a result of which, because of the investment of money, time, resources, skills, commitment, and, and quality ingredients into good quality spirits, whatever they may be, not just Scotch whiskey, rum, bourbon, rye, mezcal, there's a premium involved. And this is something that governments have been very, very, um, acutely aware of as all over the world they impose additional taxes on alcoholic liquor. Taxes that um, do not necessarily get imposed on other commodities but they do get com do get imposed on liquor because it is quote-unquote an optional luxury. Mm -hmm. And rather like cigarettes and cigars which is another good point of reference the alcoholic duty imposed on spirits, certainly where I am in the UK, is quite considerable. But we're not, it's not the only place. If you're in Canada, if you're in any of the Scandinavian countries, if you're in Iceland, you're going to have the same situation that alcohol is very expensive and therefore, although we look forward to the quality of the experience, it certainly takes the cash out of our purses. And now that we're at a moment in time, here in July 2023, where people have really got to pull in the purse strings and budget much more carefully than in recent years, it becomes more important to really be careful what you're buying and be careful how much you're spending on what you're buying. So we know that we're not going to get the fantastic quality because we're really getting priced out the market for a lot of that. The, the, the complexities of older aged bottlings. 
but at the same time the skill and professional competency increasingly involved in producing younger whiskies which are very very satisfying in terms of smell and taste has never been greater than it is now particularly with a new generation of distilleries coming into the the market like Ardna Merkin, Isle of um, Rassi and Wolf Burns another good example and uh, Glen Weavis another good example and uh, we've also got access to other spirits from around the world some rums some some bourbons for example not so much the best bourbons remain in the USA that's the that's a simple fact of it but when times are tight we have to create a little bit of a crisis to help us manage a coping mechanism so what I'm going to do here is tell you the different ways that you can look out for better value spirits not just scotch whiskey but I'll focus on scotch whiskey because I've just reviewed this non-age statement Isla Jura which it's not brilliant but it's competent it's clean enough it's a clean enough decent whiskey it's got a nice signature to it you add a little bit of water and I've, I've just reviewed it in Alfie Review 984 so I'm coming back to it briefly as a point of reference because we already probably have bottles of whiskey open and we've already been experimenting with an infinity bottle and I'll give you an update on that shortly as an extras but this is the point where we can take a discounted whiskey which in this case I got from a local supermarket for £22 a bottle which is roughly about 20 quits to 26 27 dollars now in, in the UK that's a very good price very good price and the distillers are making I don't think they're making any profit out of this at all none at all um, but they just want their brand having a presence in the market and responding to the fact that there are bargain hunters out there that are not having a bargain hunt because it's just a, a charming little option but it's actually more of a necessity so what, where, where do you find your better value experiences well for starters you get a, a discounted bottle of fairly ubiquitous single malt and then you top it up with something from what you know is a far better bottling and you don't need much you'll need maybe half a teaspoonful and you will transform the quality of this whiskey you will lift it so you use your your supermarket discounted single malt whiskey as the base for blending up with another single malt or if you've got an old Jura be perfect it means it remains a single malt and you create a blended malt so you could use Talisker 10 year old for example which would work beautifully well because the next virtually next door neighbours they've got the same style because we've got the whiskey knowledge and we're applying that whiskey knowledge we understand our single malt geography around Scotland the regional references that we're aware of so if we had Oban for example or even Ben Nevis we could add a drop of that and we retain that west coast character or if you've got any our Beg, Beaumore, Lefroig, just a tiny drop of Lefroig by the way but Kalila, Kalila blends beautifully with so many whiskies. it's very chameleon therefore you can blend up your whiskey and therefore at the end you're getting a, a result that's ahead of your expectations from just drinking what's in the bottle on its own another thing to do is just regularly keep an eye online for online retailers suddenly discounting a particular brand of single malt now recently I noticed a bottle of Bunahaben was reduced from £42 a bottle to £32 a bottle now that is a really good price but blink and you miss it because people are a lot of people are in the same boat they're on a budget they're having to really manage the cash and therefore they're holding back and spending waiting for the opportunity that they can get a tangible bargain and something to be aware of 
if these people are in a whiskey club, they won't just buy one bottle for themselves. They'll be buying for other members in the club. So they may buy five or six bottles, even more, at a discount, because it's not going to last long. And then they'll sell it on to other club members who will appreciate that they're getting a bargain. And it's a great way of, of, of bonding the whiskey club. Another place to look is auctions. Now, it's not so much in the USA because the powers that be do not encourage auction, liquor auctions. It's historic. It's just historic. It goes back to prohibition. Uh, but in the UK, there is a large variety, particularly of online whiskey auctioneers. And what we do is we go on to the auction site and we just follow what's for sale, what it's selling for, and as we gain more experience, we know what the collectors, the investors, and the, the bigger budget aficionados are going to go for, and then we look in between what's selling for a higher price and what's not selling at all. We look in that space in the middle, and we see these little boring bottlings that are not collectible. They're probably independent bottlings with a ripped label and maybe the cork's been a bit bumped or maybe the fill level and the necks are a little bit low. So the collectors don't want it. But I tell you what, it's highly unlikely that these cheaper bottles are getting faked because the fakers are looking for a big financial return. And therefore, you probably, their chances of getting a proper authentic bottling are far higher than those who may be going for the high-end collectible whiskies. You may find that if you're careful with your bidding, you can pick up a bargain. You may pick up a bottle of whiskey that is overlooked by other people. But a word of caution, malt mates, don't get caught up in bidding fever. Don't do it. Because bidding is like a gambling addiction you see the price of the whiskey, someone outbids you, you're pissed off, you're not letting go. It's like two lions round a zebra <laughs> end up battling one another rather than sharing the zebra. Hey, it's nature's way. And you get into a bidding war and before you know it, three clicks later on your little mouse, you have paid more than the actual retail price of that whiskey if you'd bought it from a shop. So beware. Another option is keep an eye on the supermarkets. When you're in the supermarkets, particularly the bigger supermarkets, be aware of the time of year and be aware of what's happening. At the moment, it's the midsummer, and there's, there's these little pop-up summer sales that are being presented by supermarkets just to keep people's interests in the spirit aisles and they, they, know that they know they can sell the gin, they know they can sell the tonics because these are the summer drinks but the sipping liquors, the rums, well rums a summer drink, of course it is in the northern hemisphere but whiskey for many people isn't, it's more of a winter drink, more of a quote unquote fireside drink. The result is that they want to just crap, catch people's attention so look out for the psychology you're looking at the middle shelf, eye level, bright little stickers, usually coloured yellow or red or orange, bright colours to grab your attention with a big price on it, which is clearly a discounted price. And you know it's not going to last very long. You've got to look at the bottle above the price and ask yourself, is that actually worth it or is the bottle inferior quality? The choice is yours. If you know a little bit about whiskey, you'll know which bottles to avoid and which bottles to consider. Another thing that you've got to be aware of with the supermarkets is that you might decide to save up your money during the summer and just drink what you've got more slowly and wait till the beginning of November. So you're talking about the start of the last week of October, but particularly the second week of November. That's when the supermarkets really start to deep discount some of the big brands. Some of them 
are worth buying Talisker 10 year old. Others like Johnny Walker Green Label, frankly, I don't want you, to, I don't want you crying. I don't want you to, to upset and, and, and very unhappy with what you've bought. So I recommend that you don't buy it. I'm getting feedback from so many directions now, from people who have bought discounted proprietary brands in a supermarket and the contents were much poorer quality than they anticipated. And finally, don't forget to check your specialist retailer. Build up a rapport from, with them. In Scotland, in Britain, we're very fortunate that you have a few high profile, small specialist retailers who actually take an interest in what they're selling. And if you just take the time to go in usually mid-week, say mid-afternoon or mid-morning when it's quieter and they have more time to engage in conversation with you. You can build up a report and then you can say, you know, I'm a regular customer here. You know I'm a regular customer. You know I've got them on a budget. Is there anything you recommend? Is there anything coming in from independent bottlers, which is good value? And what they'll probably tell you is, well, we've got this blended malt. Now, now look out for the words blended malt. Because there are increasingly we are seeing blended malts coming from the independent bottlers. Because they represent an opportunity for putting out really good value, cheaper whiskies, which are actually interesting and can be very, very rewarding in terms of smell and taste. But because of the cost to the independent bottler of bottling their single malt whiskies and the amount they have to now pay for the cask to even buy what they're going to bottle, they can't afford to discount the single malts too much. It's the blended malts. That's where they have an advantage to bring out a real banger of a, of a, of a whiskey experience at a, 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 a very accessible price. You're probably talking 30, maybe 35 pounds. So it'll be a little bit more, but if the quality's there, the sale is there too. And even if you don't get to taste in that specialist shop of what you want to buy, if you value their opinion, you can ask them, have you tried it? And they'll tell you, yeah, well, actually, we get the wee specimen bottles in so that so we can taste and try before we buy to sell to you. He says this is the huge advantage that the small independent retailers have. They know you're a specialist buyer. And they respond to that by being a specialist seller. And this is where you can pick up bottles of whiskey that are very excessively priced and they're really they're as good as the distillery only bottlings, which when you visit the distillery you can find there's at many times there's a huge premium, not always, not always, but many times you can find there's a huge premium. And finally, be careful which specialist retailer you go into. If you are a tourist, a visitor to Scotland and you're in Edinburgh and you pass a whiskey shop that's playing bagpipe music and selling tartan bonnets and has got lion rampant flags outside the front and tartan rugs and jars of whiskey marmalade and whiskey fudge that's probably not a specialist retailer. You'll know the specialist retailers because they look like proper whiskey shops. They're not tourist shops that happen to have a whiskey section right at the back of the shop where you have to go through all the tat to get to it because they put it at the back because they know it's the most profitable stuff for shoplifters to steal. So they're trying to make it as hard for the shoplifters as possible. Always a giveaway. There you go. Sharing the knowledge, malt mates. Sharing the knowledge. Hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I'm just giving you, giving you simple, practical advice here to 
be more, if you're on a budget and your budget's getting tighter, you've got a simple decision. You stop buying completely or you anticipate being much more careful what you're paying and what you're, what you're buying. You stick to your budget and then you enjoy the challenge of going on a budget treasure hunt. And this is the ways you can do it. Four simple ways. So I hope you find this useful. Cheers. It's always, as always, it's my pleasure to be sharing the knowledge with you. Um, if you're a Patreon subscriber, by the way, I will be going into more, a lot more depth on the auction whiskey challenges um, in my Patreon subscriber only videos. Because as well as early access of these videos to subscribers, um, I also have additional videos every week and also I have a monthly Patreon subscriber live stream from the Bothy lasting an hour and a half and it involves the questions and answers, sharing the knowledge, sharing the information and the reason I'm mentioning it is that this channel is about liquor, it's about alcohol. I am not promoting video games, iPhones, fail, fail videos. Um, I don't have a big audience and I don't have a big advertising return simply because of the type of the content so that the Patreon channel, all it is is buying Ralphie a dram. It, it, it's a very useful contributor to the whiskey budget, allowing me to comfortably buy and present what I review. Because I buy all this, no samples, no gifts, no freebies, no compromise. I review what I buy and thank you for subscribing to my channel and following my channel because your little clicks and the ads and all the rest of it and being a Patreon subscriber pays for my liquor. Thank you. There we have it. Um, and also, I'll just while we're, just while we're at it, I've got three books on Amazon: Stories from a Whiskey Bar, Life, Death, and Whiskey, and Search for a Whiskey Bothy. You'll find them in Amazon. I really enjoyed writing them. And as someone said recently, Ralph, Ralphie, um, now we know you really wrote it because the spelling mistakes. If it had been an AI program that wrote the book, there would be no spelling mistakes at all. So we know it's a real book. <laughs> Oh, just that's just the way it goes. Just the way it goes. Thank you for watching. Clivey Clicker time. Time for me to go. See you later. See you soon. Thank you for watching.